This is Snakes and Otters, a pointless discussion of eternal questions. Get ready. We're about to live in your head rent-free. Hello, Otterites. This is episode 217. I am Martin. And I'm Robert. I'm Francis. I'm Marcus. And I'm Andre. Aha, uh-huh. did Welcome you hear Brother that name? Andre. That's right, Brother Andre. Yay! Yay. We, we have we have officially inducted Brother Andre into the Snakes and Otters Brotherhood. Mm-hmm. Can I get a hello and a hearty yay again for yay. that? Yes, yay. <laughs> and there was much rejoicing. <laughs> there, there was, was much, much rejoicing. Eight Robin's minstrels. That's how momentous the, the Absolutely. moment is. I, I, yes. I love it when we go uh, to, to use those things. So. Uh, C- uh, Cajun is not here. He's he's in off in the wilds of uh, the high mountains of Colorado. We will Colorado hear, Springs. That's right. We will oh, hear from him next episode. Hunting though. Bigfoot. In, yeah, uh, that's in right. Colorado yeah, Springs. Uh, he, I thought mm-hmm. Bigfoot was in Oregon or something. No one knows where Bigfoot truly lies. I think Bigfoot, there's a Bigfoot's range. Bigfoot's everywhere. You know, yeah, there's right. a range. Okay. Yeah, it's like Elvis is everywhere. Big that's true. Everywhere. Florida, well, no. to Florida to Alaska. Florida to Alaska. Yes. So he's not a, Hawaii. He, he's he's going to call in on our next episode. So uh, and get some really great stuff. I'm sure to tell us about that. But here we are uh, uh, together. The opposite of Genesis. The opposite mm-hmm. of Genesis. And there were three. No, now there are six. That's right. There are six <laughs> of us now to do that. Which means I have to change the. You mean the rapture? Line. No, the. Genesis the uh, band. Oh, oh. See, I, <laughs> Genesis the band put out a record. See, I went yes yeah, after they did yes. over shedding you members out of the book. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was then there were three. Yeah, and 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 here we are. We're, we're I thought adding, you, meant, like, you know there, you know two were in the field and then there were one and you yeah, know no, the he's, whole rap. He's going thing, biblical yes, and you're yeah. going uh, uh, 80s rock music. Yes. Uh, uh, Pop music. Oh, and there we go. That's right. Well, that's a rabbit keep, hole. We're I not going. Tried down. to start an argument with Francis. Yeah, that's I understand, but we're not going to go there because uh, at least not now. It's a good one to put a pin in, though, uh, because here we, we're going to talk about. You know, this is a pop culture history sort of. It's but it's really it's we're continuing uh, for the moment at least the third of our great director yeah, series. Directors, yeah. uh, we, we, we're going to do a few of them here now, and then we'll do some more later on. It's one that, that we'll probably come back here and there and often. Uh, but this is one I know that Martin and I really wanted yeah. really bad with Francis Ford Coppola. Uh, there's no doubt Oop. in... Uh, I was going to say, there's no <laughs> doubt in my mind that everybody knows this man's work. I mean, it's, it's very like, landmark. It is. It, 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 is. Mean, it, it truly is. Um, again, he is. he's one of the... New Hollywood, New Hollywood director, uh, director. Right. So it's, he's in the same generation as Lucas and Spielberg and uh, uh, Scorsese, right? In that group. And I found interesting in researching this. I kind of zoned completely on this. Of course, his career intersects substantially with another one of our heroes, and John Milius. That's correct. Milius was part of that group. Milius, as well. yeah. Uh, yeah, Milius was was there at school with him, and Milius wrote. Apocalypse Now, absolutely. There's, mm-hmm. So they're there's all almost an, there's in that almost generation. a nepotistic type of relationship these guys had with each other. Uh, Lucas and Coppola, in particular, were tight, tight, tight. And they were nepo- we talk about them as as uh, peers, but uh, perhaps contemporaries as far as the work. But Coppola is older. Yes, he is. He is correct. Yeah, right. he is old because he was working in the early '60s when. Yeah. Uh, uh, correct. Lucas and Spielberg, you know, part of that other same yeah. group. Their seventies only primary, right? Where and and part of that was age and where yes. they came about, but they also had that that same. They all kind of came about right around ten years. They're they're, they're hitting their the kind stride. of their their first big successes at around the same time. Exactly, that's Again, where this goes. You know, Coppola is Godfather. Their early seventies, seventy two. You know, Spielberg is THX, or no, that's no, Lucas. That's Lucas. Yeah, that's Lucas, Lucas did that, but you know, THX 1138 or whatever the movie is, and then Spielberg's Jaws is really his first big triumph, not his first film, but yeah, you know, well, yeah, because he's, he's done Duel before, before that, but so it's all that uh, you know that period of seventy to seventy four, seventy five. Jaws was seventy five. Yeah, okay, trust me. Mm-hmm. Um, and and of course, you know, Spielberg, Lucas. Um, Scorsese, Scorsese is get, having his first hits in that same period. So you think about that time period, just just that one kind of five year window of seventy one to seventy five mm-hmm. is yeah. just insane. And all those landmark filmmakers are having their first big successes. That's right, and those yeah. are and those are just their first success. You know, these yeah. are the guys that come along, and uh, you know, Coppola hits gold early. Compared to the other guys, of course, he'd had a little bit longer career. He'd only done two well, or three movies. Early, early as far as uh, the calendar, right? 
That's what. But I was. they hit success, big success, much earlier in their career. Well, that's true. That's yes. right. They were younger than he was. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. uh, and we're kind of. I'm kind of all using that that push pin that Martin has dropped yeah. in uh, on the calendar to kind of yeah. say that. Well, it's, I mean, again, well, just, the, God, the Godfather was his fifth film. That's exactly right. Yeah, um, but. The others, most people would be hard pressed to name any of them. Exactly. Well, he right. has a large number that he wrote and directed uh-huh. that just don't seem to be the commercial successes. Well, some of them were even you know, almost softcore porn. No, some no. of his early stuff, very early stuff. Yeah, he was it's the only place he could get work. He, uh-huh. he was hired to cut in additional material right. into these yeah. softcore features that were just sitting on the shelf. And that's what got him distribution deals. Mm-hmm. Right. He wasn't per se shooting the pornographic part. No, that no. was already done. Yeah. He's inter- he's putting he's in actually cra- he's creating something that they could market. They, they, they could actually put out. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. Because he's it basically was- giving legitimacy to the nudie parts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is or early, a story to the yeah. to the nudie yeah. parts. This is yeah. early sixties. You know, so, this is not. Mm-hmm. You know, when you even say softcore porn, it's not even related. To right. It's more like what we would call cheesecake. So yeah. he's exactly he's right. writing the articles that people read in Playboy. <laughs> that's exactly. Good yeah. Yeah. aphorism. No, that's well, very good. This this was the stuff that was still scrambled on our cable box. Boxes when we were growing up. That's yes. right. And, yes. and it was. I mean, how many of us sat there looking at the cable boxes, just waiting for that flicker of the screen <laughs> to reveal a, a, you know, a naked breast? Yeah. Well, and, 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 but see, if that's, uh, you Apparently know, he's a, he's a film school graduate. You know, these guys could. You know, breaking in is hard into this yeah. industry. Mm-hmm. And it you is. can talk to every one of these that we've mentioned in this new Hollywood. They realized yeah. that the old studio system and the old monolithic directors that are kind of waning by this time. But mm-hmm. you've got William Wyler. John Ford, yes. and some of these Ford in Houston, and, and this. Yeah. So this group is they're again. That's what kind of why they're called New Hollywood. They're bringing a new sensibility. Mm-hmm. They're not afraid of violence. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Which The Godfather was. Yeah. Huge, yeah. You know? And you talk Peck and Paul and and Scorsese. Yeah. You know. Well, you know, well, one of the things I find interesting about the, the this New Hollywood that we've talked about, um, we've talked many times before about how the '60s was the the last gasp of the both the studio system yeah, yeah mm-hmm. and, and the and epic. and the epic and the 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 yeah. fantasy uh it, yeah. it, the way the fantasy had been done more that uh fairy tale kind of fantasy yeah. oh yeah well mm-hmm. as we opposed about... to fantasy as in speculative fiction kind sure of stuff. And, we, and the television and... was the same way we've talked about yes. you know gomer pile and the beverly hillbillies and all that was a completely different area and there's a strong demarcation mm-hmm. in 1970 right around when the beatles broke up yeah. Ironically, yes. that changed er- and right in the middle of Vietnam. Vietnam, yeah, mm-hmm. had a lot to do with it. Everything and changed, and these guys were on the forefront. Well, and Coppola uh, would uh, have been really the 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 trailblazer there because was. even though you know he, he was legitimizing the soft porn, yeah, you know, he still he wasn't doing from what I can tell. Because again, I mm-hmm. I freely admit this is just not my bailiwick. And and that's fine. You guys can ridicule me all you want. I'll just oh, bring up the whole that. steak okay. thing and, and and shame Francis that way. Um. <laughs> Check out www.snakeandotters.com and look for the word steak. Yes. yes. Wherein Francis E A K. Whereupon Francis repents is the name of uh, his blog post. Yes, yes it was. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, and, uh, but the word but, calumny was used and other, yes. other such things. It was one of the funniest bits on the blog. You got it. I will. Admit. I will yeah. Well, from your perspective, I'm sure it was. Well, uh, I thought it was. I mean, I thought that the text was rather humorous. Your yeah. response was okay, humorous. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It, was, it was. It was. It was crafted from the heart. But yes. Rabbit holding, well, let's rabbit holding, yes. Look. But my point is, though, uh, you know, he had started, and he wasn't really into that same guy because it's, it, it's the '70s when that demarcation point hits, mm-hmm. yeah. when everything goes to cop shows and cop movies, mm-hmm. and even John Wayne has to make a, a, a cop movie. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Um, that's where his talents can really take off because, mm-hmm. I mean, let's face it, that environment is better suited for his type of storytelling. Yeah. So yeah. I, I want to hit two more uh, things that they're. They're common threads here, and then I want to make sure Brother Andre gets in. Yeah, because he, he's, he's got his hand. I can't tell if he wants to say anything or not. <laughs> I think, so let's not pull my finger. That's American filmmakers. Yes. yes. And to a large degree, ties to UCLA. And yes. Film school. Yes. Oh, that's, that's film right. School. That's right. Yeah. Most of these guys came through Ilias, that window. And, and I don't think Scorsese mm-hmm. did. But he's a New Yorker, I think, almost exclusively. But, but Lucas and Spielberg, yeah. Lucas, they, Spielberg, Milius, yeah. Coppola have ties to California mm-hmm. and, and to the UCLA Film School. So they're, 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 their lenses are going to be a, of a similar focus. Right, mm-hmm. yes. Even though they're, you know, they're the giants. Uh, Andre, 
Uh, one point I wanted to make to Robert, he was mentioning that the 60s were the end of the old school, you know, thematic uh, movie making where John Wayne was always the hero, never had any mm-hmm. um, issues. The good guy always won. Yes. Uh, right. yeah. li- like you, I had not watched a lot of uh, these fi- uh, Ford's films. I went and watched Apocalypse Now, and it struck me that there was questioning about the validity of the orders the soldier was given and, right. mm-hmm. and yep. that uh, he questioned it and, and that the American soldiers weren't always uh, viewed as the most positive. Oh, attribute. well, yeah. No. Right. Would have never there seen are, there are no good guys in Apocalypse no. Now. I'm well, yeah. well yeah. there are no good guys in the Vietnam movies, period, yeah. for the most who, part. Who remembers the, the correlation between Apocalypse Now and Animal House? Uh, okay, you've got me there. I, I Niedermeyer. Know, just, Oh, Niedermeyer, yes. Niedermeyer. Yes. They talk about, in, in Apocalypse Now, they talk about how maybe they shouldn't have shot Niedermeyer. Yes, and there's the bit at the, at at the, the credits. At the, credi- the credits of, of Animal House, they mention how Niedermeyer was killed, was by, killed, his killed by his own troops. Yeah, yeah. Fragged, fragged by an officer, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Right, yeah so there's that. Yeah, yeah you're but right. That's a- Francis and I, when we were doing our setup here at the Annex, uh, the Studio F Annex, where we were at right, today, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, we were talking about how... Not in the Baxter building, but the Annex... Yes. Offsite. Yeah. Offsite. Uh, offsite, is... yes. Uh, Four Freedoms Plaza, perhaps. Yeah, I like that. For Chinatown. Nice mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, until the 80s, one of the great things about the 80s, besides the fact that it's when we all came of age as, mm-hmm. as you know, adults and what have you, uh, it is truly the Gen X decade. And although the, our later Gen X compatriots, they will claim the 90s because, you know, they're the, the, the youngest of the, the, yeah. the, the Gen X. Yeah, they don't count. Know. The Grungers. Well, yeah, the Grungers. Yeah, I like Grungers. wannabes. A lot of the late, yeah. late 70s. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't, you know, I hate right. markations. I like, I like right. the, the you know, ebb and flow. It, the, but the de- common decade is the 80s. That's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's always the But red it hot wasn't until the 80s when you had uh, Rambo specifically, the second movie. Yeah. Where you had a positive movie where you actually had an, an actual hero. About the Vietnam a military War. hero yeah. related yeah, and to Vietnam. That was, that was a very... Uh, but this is the first time since the Green so, Berets. Right. Yeah. And, and, and it was, was cathartic yeah. for Absolutely. the country as a whole. And, and, and John Wayne got a million dollars worth of grief over making that pro-Vietnam movie in 68. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. It was seen as, you yeah. know, as tone deaf and uh, very jingoistic. And mm-hmm. maybe so, but it, it was still... But again, that's the time. That's the time. And he was... Exactly. He, and the band. Yeah. 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 And it was uh, it was amazing to me that uh, that and I'll, and I'll talk about apocalypse. We want to talk about a lot about apocalypse now here in just a second because brother Andre just watched it last night for the first time. So we, uh, I've been memorizing it since 1990. Yeah, I'm, I love I'm, the I'm, smell I'm, of napalm in the morning. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely. I mean, you that's, smell that? Yeah. You smell that? That's victory. Yeah. Gasoline. That's napalm, son. That's right. No, nothing else has that gasoline that's smell. Well. That's right. We're we, we, we're going to end up. You can't. We're going to break into quoting of that one. You yeah. just can't not do it. Well, mm-hmm. but that's uh, kind of what I wanted to ask you, Captain. Yes, sir. So Coppola's career again is very large. Yeah, we mentioned a little bit mm-hmm. that it is somewhat up and down. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's, there's small films, The Outsiders, things like that that oh. he had some relative oh. success with. Well, yeah, so he had some stinkers. But there's two kind of pillars. That's right. That that's, basically that's, has a reputation. That's what we're going to talk yeah. mostly about. Is, you know, yeah, the yeah. Godfather series mm-hmm. and Apocalypse Now. Yeah. Correct, and I think that's, that's exactly where I was wanting to go with that. Uh, let's talk Godfather for a few minutes, mm-hmm. uh, because that was the one that— Not the first choice to direct it. Oh, he was not, uh, and they, they, the studio didn't even believe in the concept for a long time. Uh, I have not finished the uh, Amazon Prime series, uh, The Offer, yeah. which is about the making of— Mrs. Robert watched that. She enjoyed it quite a bit. I watched yeah. a couple of them, and, I, and it really is good. It, it, it is kind of a dark comedy in many ways, yeah. because Coppola comes across as kind of one of the heroes out of that, because he he, he is able to bring a vision with him yes. almost yes. by accident, yes. because so, he just kind of yes. slid it under the, under the door. Yeah. So Coppola's genius with that material is that he converted it from a gangster movie Mm-hmm. To a family Business. dynamic film oh, about absolutely. examining the family more than it, the studio's expecting the old school gangster movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're expecting the old, Scarface, you know, the original Scarface. Machine Gun Kelly, uh, you know, uh, 
Edgar G. Robinson. That's exactly yeah, Edgar, yeah. Edgar G. Robinson. Exactly yeah. right. And Edward that, G., Edward and that G. was Robinson, yeah, uh, yeah. In, in your heart, and they recognized no, this is far more complicated than that because this is Italian culture, mm-hmm. uh, it, it just a submersion into that. Yeah, the, and a the melding family. of it with this organized crime piece. But it's also it, you're right. It, it is a family story. I mean, ultimately, it is the story of Al Pacino's character. Michael Corleone. That is, mm-hmm. but you don't. He is know. the Godfather. You think at the first, it's, it's it, no, it's Vito. It's correct, but it's not. It is, and it's it's really it's kind of like those. Uh, uh, it's like Game of Thrones when you read the first book. You think it's all about uh, Sean Bean's character Edward Stark. It's not. It's about his the no, because he gets killed at the very killed, end. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, which I, is the same I thing. Still with want to strike over that. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it's and it's because it's about his children, which yes. is essentially well, the Godfather is the same thing. I mean, mm-hmm. it's yeah. uh, but you can't. Talk about the children unless you've talked about the parent, and that's why right. Vito is still is an, an ascendancy. Well, right. you know that's interesting. Yeah, and I, I freely admit. I know this is going. To, I think this may actually shock Martin. Uh, I have only I've never watched the entirety of either of those films, Apocalypse Now or the Godfather movies. I've seen bits of them over the years. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, actually, oh, yeah. of the Godfather series, I've not watched number three at all. Uh, ironically, I, I think most people would find that acceptable, from what I well, understand. No. <laughs> ironically, I forced Mrs. Uh, Francis, and you, just saying that phrase, probably you're all shocked with that. Uh, yeah, it phrase. happens occasionally. Occasionally, you I, encouraged her. No, yes. I forced her. Yes, uh, he picks she, a hill to die on. A hill to die on. Yeah. Because I knew we were going to do this. I had not sat through the, the Godfather Part Three myself, but oh, and you, that's the one. That's the I one mean, you chose to die well, on. Well, I'd already seen all the others. For, so. From what I understand, it, there's criticism of Sofia Coppola's performance, but she was a last minute substitution. Yeah, that's for correct. Winona Ryder. I that think is it exactly is. right. Yeah, but oh. Andy Garcia apparently was tremendous, and he was. And it. like I say, uh, Mrs. Martin gave her. I made her watch it, Mrs. Francis. Mrs. Francis, yeah, and uh, and she and she said, say, what end, kind of stuff is going on here? And she said, We're not swapping. I, she said, I didn't hate it, which for her was high praise, <laughs> only because this is totally out of anything she would ever want to watch. I mean, right. I literally, I literally oh, yeah. forced, but I was running out of time. I wanted to get it watched so we could, because I think it is unfairly criticized in Probably, many areas. Yes. Because okay. I, I told her, because you know, she's kind of a virgin on this issue, and I said, watch Sofia Coppola and tell me what you think of her, yeah. you know, without trying to lead the jury in any way. And you know, and we we check in every once. She says, "I like this. She's really she's 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 she was nineteen at the time, yeah. And she had no experience, but you know, she was a last minute substitution. And I did tell her that. And she says and she did a fine job. She's actually become an amazing director, right? She, she's pretty now. much out of acting yeah. and has has gone into directing, directing herself. And yeah. But yeah. she's 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 just a little younger than we are. Actually, she's yeah. uh, mm-hmm. she's like well, early, she would be Gen X then. Yeah, she's she's early fifties, whereas we're getting closer to later fifties. And an amazingly talented and beautiful lady. I mean, she's a she's coming off as a nineteen year old kid in this movie, but that's who she's playing. She's right. playing the daughter uh, in 1979 of Michael Corleone. Uh, it's a I, I love. I really liked it. I watched the longest version you could get deliberately. Uh, I was say, well, I could have told you that. Yeah, and it, <laughs> uh, it was uh, uh, only because I know that Coppola went back in 2020 and recut it. And earned universal praise for what he did with it. Oh, interesting. He, uh, uh, and he retitled it Godfather Three: The Death of Michael Corleone, which is how the thing ends. Right. Had, Spoiler was, alert. Yeah, that was the original intent. Yeah. And the studio said, no, you're going to call it part three. But it, exactly. And that's yeah. kind of where he went back to that. Yeah, it's interesting because um, it's probably one of the few let's go back and fix things that actually improve. Because, oh, very much so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Most yeah. people can't stand the, the, the things that, that uh, Lucas has done, for instance. Oh, you're exactly right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, uh, of and course, you know, Lucas, I would take his edits to the Star Wars trilogy, the original trilogy, over everything Disney has done since they bought the property. I would agree oh, completely. Yeah. I would agree completely. And, but and I, I want to say that I would even let Greedo shoot first. No, over over those. No, I, I, over, over the Disney properties. Yes, I would. Greedo I would, shot uh, first. No, uh, yeah. no, no, hand shot. There's no first because yeah. it implies that that Greedo, Greedo got a shot. He didn't hand shot. Sh- yeah, he didn't get a shot off at all. Yeah, all right. uh, unfired but, and and that was it. I, I'm willing to, I'm willing to take the Mandalorian over seeing yes. Jabba the Hutt move. Uh, yeah, when they when they CGI Jabba in I, I, yes, I spoke of the movies primarily because yeah. the TV shows that that Disney has done have been, in my opinion, phenomenal. Oh, okay. 
uh, oh, Mandalorian yeah, I, I, is an excellent. I would, I would agree. Yeah, I've not even watched any of it, but yeah, oh, oh, Mandalorian is very good. I, I recommend it. Good, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, how can you not like Baby Yoda? Come on. We're we're actually going to do a, an, ep- an episode later. Baby this, Yoda later this summer about Star Wars. Yes. We're going to yeah. basically let Robert have all his time to talk about <laughs> what he loves because he's the resident Star Wars expert. Always has been. So, uh, but I well, I want to go back to something you mentioned because uh, you know this maybe will help. Uh, some of our younger listeners, uh, yeah. although I imagine most of our listeners are like us, uh, old as dirt, uh, or maybe a couple of years younger than dirt. Um, you likened it to Game of Thrones. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things that I've always thought, and so again, not having the full breadth of experience with the movies that, mm-hmm. that the rest of you guys do, um, one of the things that always struck me with Game of Thrones mm-hmm. is that, you know, you have all of these adults that are for the most part, competent. Now, yeah. granted, King Robert is a total ass. Yeah. And should never have been king. Uh, he, he's the epitome of the narcissist. He is. That's right. But he was the strongest guy in the but in the Well, partially because yeah. he's the, the bully. Yeah, he's he's the bully. a bully. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, whereas Ned, if anybody should have been king, it should have been him. Absolutely. Yeah. He, well, he's, he's deliberately shown as the virtuous, shining example yes. of what all that should be best. Yes. And basically... the. The movie ends, or not the movies, the books, basically very quickly devolve to the point, and I use devolve, I mean the, the, the societal structure in the books, right. mm-hmm. devolve to the point where everything is about their kids, yeah. and basically how they screw it up, how they oh. totally screw up Westeros. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, so you're right. You think so they're it. all sunny. Well, and that's well, uh, yeah, that's what I wanted drift. to talk about. Yeah, that's right. Is that the same this parallel is, we're talking about? Interesting. With Gotham? I don't think anybody's ever drawn a line between Puzo and George R. R. Martin. So, well, I, I'll give you, I'll give you that. Well, that's probably because Puzo can finish a story. Yeah. Let's take that to reality. Is don't, don't most people think that their kids screw up what they've created? Well, probably, but I think object when you look at Game of Thrones objectively. <laughs> well, I mean, for most people, it's they subjective. just put a zero on the screw. Well, and, yeah. maybe, and you're, I think you're exactly right. Their legacy is cri- is a critical undercurrent in both of those yes. franchises. Yes, it's huge mm-hmm, because yeah. the whole point of Vito Corleone is. I am going to hand this to my successor. But he mm-hmm. also realizes very quickly, as does the audience, Sonny Corleone really should not be in charge. He's a hothead. He is somebody that is going to lead us. He's sharp, but he is going to lead us de- into war, and that war is always bad. That's Vito's take. Yeah, Vito say the war is bad for business. That's right. And he, as he tells Sonny early as the in the Ferengi would tell you, war is good for business, too. No. War, that's But right. that's a different business. thing. Yeah, but and and it, it, it's shown early in that first movie when uh, Sonny opens his yap during negotiations, and Vito famously tells him, "Don't ever let them know what yeah. you're. Don't yeah. ever speak." Once, once Salazzo's out of the room, yeah, don't ever let anyone outside of the family know what you're thinking. That's right. Which is why that's you know that shows that's, that that Sonny's that's shown the tension between yeah. the generations, which mm-hmm. is going back to what you're talking about. Yeah, here. Sonny ultimately. Um, he does good things as he sees them. I mean, he he yeah. beats the snot out of the out of the putts that married his sister and is abusing her. But he doesn't realize that's a setup. Well, that's correct. Well, I mean, it didn't start that way. Originally, it was. I mean, it becomes a setup after it goes on, and people realize, oh, that's what he does. We yeah, we know we can get Sonny out of the house because if, of this. If, if we because he's already demonstrated that that's one thing that will that will. Send him right. up the flag, and that's that's, that's, the guy know, up that's something that's Vito couldn't tell so, him. That Vito couldn't teach him. Hey, they're setting you up, and he gets machine gunned. Yeah, after mm-hmm. so Sonny is Carlo. Joffrey. Sonny is Joffrey. You could is say that, that what we're saying? I don't know Joffrey. I'm I'm not as familiar with Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah, Joffrey is the the boy Joffrey. king that everyone hated. That's correct. Yeah. Well, he's not oh, as yeah. well. He was the sadistic. He is not evil. Uh, it, no, no, that'd be everybody no, loves Sonny. He's pure evil. Well, everybody yeah. loves Sonny. Godfather is much more up. nuanced than that. It, it's far okay. more black and white. But there's some parallels there because he's he's the guy that's next in line, but should never be allowed well, to be in charge. But none of the capos were ever going to follow Sonny. No, no, they would. They would they follow Sonny. Yeah. They were never going to betray Sonny. Well, they would have feared him. There's no they doubt about that. They, they, they would have feared him. They would have feared him. He would have. So the fear and allegiance are not equal. Yeah, right. but they weren't gonna. They weren't gonna. Stab him. No, because they knew that he would, you know, he's he's yeah. going to lead them very clearly. But yeah. it's going to be a very different direction than Vito wanted. He, yeah. That's why Michael ends up at the end. Right, and, and Vito says, I never wanted this for you. Because he thought of him as a, I want you to be the legit guy. 
the sensitive guy like you've always been. And mm-hmm. the whole turn of the movie is he never was that guy. Or if he was, it was a lie. Yeah. Because he so quickly yeah. and easily embraces the dark side, uh, well, which, and, which and, is a common thing. Right, and, and Vito comes to understand that as well, that with Sonny gone... Mm-hmm. The only person I have left to impart these lessons to now is Michael. And Michael will listen. Michael, Michael, will, Michael will do Michael it. He's the one that they keep lesson. pulling back in, right? That's exactly yes. right. Well, That's Michael has the big picture in mind and not the immediate response. That's correct. Yeah. Right. And, and, and Sonny's very much, you know, wherever it is leads him that he's going to follow. Right, irony, which is very much a Joffrey thing. That, okay. that is very much so. The irony of all this is, because we're talking mostly that first movie, skip the second for a moment, but this all gets paid forward in that third movie, which I just watched, because this is Michael Corleone as an old man working on his legacy. Trying to figure out who to hand it off Trying to. Trying who to hand it off to. And ironically, the only guy left standing is Sonny's illegitimate son. Yes. Uh, Andy Garcia, who you are right, absolutely. The second movie he's done, fantastic in this movie. He makes that movie. It's yeah. un- unbelievable how great a performance that he yeah. gives because he is his father made over. So ironically, all those things that Vito did not want is ultimately what comes in at the end. And uh, Michael's way leads to tragedy, ironically, by trying to go legit. Yeah. I'm not going to spoil the ending of it. Uh, it's been long enough. It's been long it's enough. Okay. That's right. But you know, it ultimately, he the thing he's forty trying years to, isn't enough. Yeah, he's trying to preserve his legacy, and that very legacy is destroyed on the. And I'll, I'll just give you this on the steps of the opera house in Palermo, Sicily, because Michael thought he could become legitimate and could not. Only Sonny's way would. So, win. real quick, uh, again, not to, to uh, uh, co-opt your captaincy. Uh, I know, but we you know, well. But I have some questions. Please, please, go, questions. Go ahead. And then we'll so, the bird uh, break. what I'm hearing is, is very interesting because the story, the the episode is supposed to be about Francis Ford Coppola. Yeah, and we're talking story. I know. There's no way. I now, knew this was coming. I yeah. knew we would. Yeah. So I, th- I want to point out a couple of things and ask some questions here. You, uh-huh. you had something, Marcus? No, no. I agree okay. With you. Um, so part of that is the brilliance of Mario Puzo. Mm-hmm. Right, because that's yes. the story. He, that's yeah, the story that he did the the original novel and he did the screenplay for all three movies. Yes, yes. at Coppola's uh, assistance for the last in, insistence for the last two. Right. Mm-hmm. So Coppola did. A, a so this is truly a, a partnership that it makes God work. It is very, work. very yes. much, very much. Yes, yeah, I, absolutely. I think, I think that's story very fair visual. to yeah. say that, that you know Coppola worked hand in hand with Mario Puzo. But even to so, bring these to the screen, the director. Even if he works hand in hand, he can still screw it up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and for Coppola to have uh, successfully brought this about uh, is is just is still a phenomenal achievement. Yeah. And well, I want to liken this to again. I want to use the Game of Thrones analogy here. Okay. Yeah. I think you know it, it might be a little bit easier for for many people who who might be listening to understand this. Um. So we all know those of us who watch Game of Thrones. Yeah. Uh, there is a distinct point beyond which you realize George R. R. Martin's material has been exhausted. That's right. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. at that point, everything goes off the rails. It does very much so. Everything Same goes as season eight. Off. Yeah, absolutely. Well, part of season most of season says season seven is also yeah. non. It's just R. R. Martin it's just material. glaringly obvious in that last one. You're right. And it, 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 it I, I, and I think there's a there's a great point there. Is that you know the story and the 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 visuals that you know directing that that movie movie mm-hmm. or TV series, uh, you know, just because you're a good director, yeah, doesn't mean that you can work with, uh, you know, that you can make a movie that's based on other people's work, right? Because we've seen that with the last two seasons, oh, yeah, of Game De- of Thrones, absolutely derivative, uh, you know, trying to adapt that's a better word to adapt something from book to screen is can be a, a dangerous prospect. Well, it can, but they weren't even... That's my point with, with season seven and eight of Game of Thrones. They didn't even have anything to adapt. They were making it up as they went along. Now, they were checking with George R.R. R. Martin. He's like, all right, that's not what I'm going to be doing mm-hmm. if I ever figure out what I'm doing. Yeah, he, he gave a broad but, broad strokes on what he was going to end up. Right, and they still ended up, I think, in places where he did not intend to go ultimately, but who yeah. knows if he ever even finishes it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's just... I find it fascinating, though, that... that that because they're both epic stories, very much so. Yes, and they're about families. Yeah, they are, and that's what. And Coppola managed to complete 
even if it you know had to do it years later with the the remass or the the re-edited version of, of uh-huh. Godfather Three, uh, a coherent story. Oh yeah, both and that's exactly and, uh, what Game corporate. of Thrones failed at. That's right. Was the last two seasons did not complete yeah. the coherent story. The meta story, story got dropped. But Individual stories that make up the meta. Well, and they were eh, eh. they were just bad. It was some of it was just bad storytelling too. Very much so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that was what was disappointing because how can you work for six seasons on something and not start to understand how story works i mean you if you're a director you should already know but but i mean but i but i bring this up not to to denigrate the game of thrones but more to point out what is the obvious brilliance and again even though i've not watched all of these movies the entirety Mm -hmm. you know i recognize the brilliance because i've seen a lot i've read about it you know i mean for somebody our age it's difficult not to godfather one is thought of as perhaps the best american film ever made that's right yeah and here why not not two uh, there has been some argument that way. Yeah, yeah one and two kind of. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's really is thought of right up there. You know, people laud like Citizen Kane. Right. Yeah, I mean, and Godfather it's, it's, is right there. It's right there. Yeah. Right. But I mean, yes, I agree. But I, I I've always yeah. thought people have thought Godfather Two was it, more. It has been talked about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here's the here's the better part of that is the original Puzo work was far less family oriented than Coppola and he changed for the movie. So most of that brilliance comes out in the movie less so in the book which is almost always the opposite that's right well uh, of course you had the two of them working together and yes. the, it, it's catching light yeah in the i model. mean they have to decide what 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 parts that's, are we trimming out whose that's story the issue and, and and i would imagine it's clemenza and and uh, um, uh the other capo is who they're kind of trimming out right uh, a similar thing happened Cassio. with martin Cassio. he was heavily involved in in the first six seasons and, and helping yeah. them figure very it much out. so yeah and by that time he kind of you know i don't know if he lost interest or they just went on their own way or whatever whereas well he kept writing himself into corners too well, that's, that's and more of a problem too. And that's either I, I love his stories, but that's either just freaking laziness, or he's lost interest and won't discipline himself to go back. And, and I think fix it's it. the last one point to bring up is you, you're using the parallel of Game of Thrones and the Godfather series. The story was told in the Godfather series by one person, Francis Ford Coppola. But um, how yes. many directors were involved in eight seasons? <laughs> of, probably quite uh, a bit. I mean, there was probably a showrunner. Uh, well, it was. Most shows that yeah, are, D&D, are... David and David. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, you know, like, you look at Doctor Who, there's a showrunner that... that ben Hoff and Weiss. Overall... Those are the two guys. Controls that, the vision. Controls the yeah. vision, that's right. And ultimately, it lays at their feet. And, and Marvel has the same thing with uh, with their movies. Kevin Feige, uh, yeah. Uh, Kevin Feige. Mm-hmm. And when you look at the, the Star Wars stuff, They've got a, a a small group that are the guiding force. Dave Filoni and then how did Jar Jar Binks ever show up? Well, that's entirely a George Lucas. That's a Lucas. A Lucas. He, yeah, he, uh, he. Although he was supposed to be Darth Jar Jar. Uh, he he is a Sith Lord. Yeah, that is my head cannon. He is a Sith Lord. All right. Yeah, we're gonna do a whole whole episode on that. Let's. Uh, yeah. uh, we could talk a lot more on Godfather. I wish. I wish well, we, we should probably time. move on. We yeah. need to move into the. Uh, it's time to bourbon break. Stole it again. Sorry, sorry. Stole it again. That's all right. I thought we were egalitarian here. Liberté, egalité, fraternité. Uh, except when it steps on my toes. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, uh, I actually, uh, I'm going to start this one first, if I'm Yes, because we, yes. Yes, please. Yeah. So, uh, I have, uh, I, as I've talked to some of you guys about, I have. it's been my mission. Basil Hayden is probably my favorite brand of bourbon. Has been. It's, it was the first one that it's we family really, bourbon. Family bourbon. Uh, relate. You know, he's direct ancestor. Uh, it's made by the Beam Company. They do a really good job with it. Uh, it is a. It is a lower proof, generally speaking. So Eighty proof is generally what you're going to find them at. Yeah, that's right. And it's, so it's very accessible to anyone. But they have had a line extension in recent years, and I have in recent days picked up several of those. Uh, we we have the uh, uh, the toasted version. Uh, which we're not sampling here, but two of these line extensions. We oh, have. Uh, oh you, Brother Andre has Brother the Andre, Okay, version. so we, we have got a clean sweep here for this episode. Uh, we have three of their line extensions that each one of us, three of us, have tried in this one here. So I'm going to go first and let you guys kind of carry the ball on the, whatever you're drinking. Uh, I'm doing the red wine cask finish of Basil Hayden. This is a almost... Uh, you, some folks might be tempted to say sacrilegious, but I think it is ultimately brilliant. They have taken their regular Basil Hayden here, 80 proof. Uh, pass that over to Imperator here, uh, if if we can get it over to him. Yeah, I want to, 
so he can get a sniff of this one here. Because it is the, the regular basil Hayden, which is like you say, it, it, uh, it's 80 proof, so it's very low. It is finished in red wine casks from California. So uh, I have been sipping on it here quite a bit. Uh, it's got a red tint Yes. Sort of, kind of, to the bottle when you and, compare it with the other two that were. And sitting. the nose really picks up the wine when you when you it open does, that up. But I when you, you drink that bad boy, you are not getting a wine taste at all. What you're getting here, and here's what the notes on on the bottle are, which I love. This uh, it's considered warm and delicate mm-hmm. for the finish, and it has dried fruit, vanilla, mm-hmm. cherry, and toasted oak. I got uh, yeah the cherry on the nose. Yeah, I thought with, with the aroma of cherry is is a ton of what comes through. It is, but nice. it's it's muted. It is subdued and it is blended very very well. This is a su- it's not sweet at all. It's got a is a, it a dry? It's got a little bit of that to it. It's, so, it's a well, they're a higher rye than some of the stuff we have. Yeah, right? basically there is, is a rye. And because it's a low proof. You know, mm-hmm. that's why it, there's not a sting as a general. It's an interesting balance that. <laughs> yeah. It really is to have that rye pepperiness it's, along exactly. with some it's kind of floral cherry. on the nose. Absolutely. There's the dried fruit and the cherry that goes with that. Mm-hmm. I am a fan. This is this is probably not going to be around forever. Well, it smells great. Yeah. I mean, it, it's. Okay. Really I'm, I'm interested sound. to get a sip of that. Yeah. Uh, I'll make sure. At some I'll, point. I'll make sure that you get a chance to do that. It, it is. You would think it sounds weird just by the name, red wine cask finish, but wow. Yeah, it is unique. Very, very, now, very what's the price point on that? Uh, this one here is about fifth. No, no, no. Uh, That's closer to, to seventy. Yeah, no, it? this is a sixty-three. Is what I paid. Yeah, for. yeah. I paid for each yeah. one of these. I caught them on sale. Uh, the three bottles that we're sampling here today, I got them about sixty-three, sixty-five. I think. That's pretty good. Yeah, that. that yeah, yeah. It, it was not it's bad. It's starting to be a thing that the uh, the, the distillers are doing is experimenting with this idea of right. the second barrel. And, and it being a wine barrel or or, or something a little or, bit yeah differently. brandy or yeah, something. Uh, yeah. I mean and, and other whiskeys are picking up on that yeah. too not yes. just bourbon Basil Hayden has a ten year version that's about a hundred bucks I do not have that one of these days maybe but uh, that's interesting which one are you going to pick up first the old Forester nineteen twenty four or oh, the ten year Basil Hayden there therein lies the conundrum <laughs> indeed it does yeah. indeed it is uh, but Andre you've got uh, you you got the toasted right toasted. yes I have the toasted one and. Uh, I, I was when I first tasted it, it. It had a what I thought was peppery, but I think it's more of a caramel flavor. And then, I think it's uh, that char. And well, yeah. also the there's a charred uh, wood flavor in there, mm-hmm. and okay, it's yeah. interesting because it's not just the typical Kentucky kiss, but it, it it just sits on the tongue. And it's uh-huh. probably been several minutes since I've taken my last sip, and I still feel it uh, resonating on the tongue. And the red wine cask is the same way. Uh, there's not hug to it at all, and it doesn't go up in the nasal passage. Well, I think the I think the toast had a decent hug because I uh, You've tried it you before. Know, yeah, you know, uh, listeners don't know, but we've uh, we're doing these episodes out of order. Uh, and so in the uh, code of honor that they will hear next time, mm-hmm. I had the toasted and the toasted, um, uh, you know, I thought was a uh, very, a little smoky uh, with, with the chari. Yes. Yeah. But I got a little bit of the hug uh, as it, it as it uh, went down. Now, it thinned out yeah, it quick, pretty it, quickly, but it, not not as fast as like the Blanton's that we talked about or the uh, the Buffalo Trace. You don't consider that flat then? No, no. no that no, is a no, deep no. flavor. You guys do. A and, very and, deep flavor. And, and this red wine. I mean, the that's, toasting that's, is that's interesting what we like. to me. Yeah. That's what we like. That's deep, like. Yeah. deep flavor, yeah. yeah. Robert, I, you've got the, uh, you got the other. Th- so the I have the other one. So this one is actually not a bourbon. Yeah, it's a. This is the malted rye, right? And so, uh, as longtime listeners will know, uh, I'm not a huge fan of rye, just because um, too many of the ones that I've had, because they still outnumber the good ones. Uh, and I'm not saying they're necessarily bad, but too many of the high rye bourbons, the peppery taste mm. tends to overshadow everything else, right? And uh, you know, when you do a tasting, that's almost always the second thing that they have you taste is the high rye bourbon. And then everything else is just ruined to me. Now, this one. Yeah. It all tastes like pepper after that. Every, exactly. Everything. It just blasts your taste buds. It does. Now, this, even though it is a rye whiskey, not a bourbon, uh, does not do that. Is it so, it's malted? 
It, maybe. Yeah. I, I honestly do not have enough experience with the malted barley and the malted rye That's to be able yeah, to tell. But I'm going to take really another sip here. Yeah, I say it's only 80 proof. So, again, all of the Basil Hayden line, I think, is 80 that, proof. That could be part of it, too, is that it's not a high proof. But, yeah, right. so, it's, so the age. alcohol itself is not as potent or as yes. pungent. Is there an age statement on that one? Uh, uh, I don't think. Uh, yeah, probably. So you guys keep talking. I'll look. So uh, when I when I first had it before it uh, uh, bloomed and and, um, and now before it's a little watered down because it's been sitting there for. I actually had to top off a little bit <laughs> on there so that it wasn't all water uh, because we were doing our show prep for so long. But uh, you get a very nice, a pleasant fla- uh, peppery taste in the mouth when mm-hmm. you first have it, but it does not linger like so many rye's. Okay. And it's got a very nice Kentucky hug. Uh, I would say that if you're going to have this, very little ice. You do want the ice to help it bloom. But I think too much ice, like many of the bourbons and, and other whiskeys we've talked about, um, too much dilutes it too far. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you have an 80-proof uh, uh, bourbon or rye or any any other kind of, of alcohol, you need to limit the, the ice because... Uh, it dilutes the alcohol too much, and and let's and face it, becomes it the alcohol, forty proof. Yeah, it yeah. becomes forty proof, and you know at that point you might as well be drinking Nyquil. Uh, I mean Nyquil's a little bit lower proof. We love you, that. Nyquil. But you know, it, it, it's there's no age statement, but it is considered small batch here, and, it's, and it speaks of uh, one thing I love about Basil Hayden. It gives you the it gives you flavor notes on the side, lightly floral hints of oak, yes. caramel, and cinnamon with yes. a chocolate and warm spice finish. Yes, that cinnamon uh, is often uh, not necessarily confused, but uh, 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 they are uh, similar with the peppery taste. You know, you, yeah. you, you, some people call the cinnamon flavor a uh, peppery thing uh, because of the. It's going to be more tongue. of a baking spice type deal, kind of the nutmeg stuff like that, almost gingery. Uh, yeah, is that in what that you're sense? getting? Kind of nutmeg. Um, I, honestly, I don't do deal with the, the baking spices enough to really be able to say that. Um, but maybe uh, a little bit of the the gingery where you have a really strong ginger. It has a similar kind of uh, uh, reaction on the tongue, but it's very good. Uh, again, I'm not a huge rye fan in general, mm-hmm. but this is an excellent rye. Excellent. Well, I'm glad. I would be interested to compare this to the um, um, Hemingway rye. Hemingway, yeah. yeah well, that we are well, saving for Francis's publication. That's correct. Uh, contract might be a sufficient kind of time. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, that's up to you. That's up to yeah, you. We'll think about yeah, that. That's we up to you. Purchased mm-hmm. that bottle at uh, at the Bourbon Fest last year. Signed Specifically last for? Year. When, when when we get things done for my books. Mm-hmm. Uh, or yes. bo- well, first book. For the first book, yeah, yeah. At least. And it depends on how they how they work on that. Uh, talking with the folks at Jump Master Press. I will tell you guys, I don't think, I've told Robert, uh, I did submit my fu- my full manuscript this past week mm-hmm. to the guys as yeah, they requested. This, this was your deadline was this, February. Well, that, yeah, exactly. And I, I set myself a a specific date. Uh, it was actually the day after my son's birthday, the day before your son's birthday, yep. Martin. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, oh, you turned it in on Ronald Reagan's birthday. Well, yeah, which is also the anniversary. All hail the king. Yeah, uh, uh, which was Ronaldus Maximus. Yeah, which was also the date of my grandfather's death in seventy two. So there's also the date of uh, the king's death, Jack Kirby. Oh, that's correct. Exactly. He died on February sixth. So there were reasons to pick that date. Uh, it wasn't immediately first. It's a momentous date, no matter how you look at it. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I've sent it off to the folks. Uh, we we've talked a lot. We've met the guys uh, at, at Jump. Great Master. guys. Kyle is an Kyle excellent, is an excellent guy. guy. He's I'm sure he's the one that's uh, he's the one that did my eval on my first uh, partial submission, and and you know told me go ahead and send it. We want it. We want to talk about it. We want to see it. So uh, here's hopeful. Uh, uh, you'll hear first here probably uh, as as things develop. Uh, along that, along those lines, but yes. Uh, yes, becoming that published author is definitely my goal, as we all know, uh, and I'm I am within striking distance. I do yes, you're going the the traditional, but small press, right? Yeah, small press, Currently. exactly. Yeah, but Currently, yes. like I say, having met the guys, and I owe a lot to Robert, especially for pushing me into that me- meeting the guys at Imaginary. You would have done it. I just made it happen a little sooner. Well, it, it, it's easy to have. It's better to have an introduduction. It really, it is. Yes. It, it, it's a and good it's thing. which is interesting because I've not had anything published with them, but. Uh, even though I am on the slightly to the introvert side of the um, uh, to the scale of things, uh, I am very much and, and I'm better at this uh, after having been a deacon now for twelve years yeah. because you're forced mm-hmm. into it. Because as my former pastor used to say, and he probably still says, people wear me out. 
Uh, you well, know, yeah, I would agree with a, that. Which yeah. makes after masses really difficult at times. Yeah. Uh, Andy, is, Andre, is, I think you would agree. Yes. So, yes, that's an something we didn't mention. An introvert would agree. An extrovert would disagree with that statement. That's right. right. Well, I'm, I'm asking you to take a stand here, sir. Yes. Yes, if, if I would wish. agree. Okay. I am a, I'm an introvert by nature. Yes. Right. Well, I think a lot of clergy are. I think most of us are. That's yeah, right. I think yeah. a lot of clergy are. So that we didn't mention highly. that, but Brother Andre is also Brother Deacon uh, as that's right. well. There's three uh, of us here. Three of us here now. So, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. So please explain the, the nomenclature, because the three of us have... There's an explanation to Martin, Robert, and Francis. Yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, we may have done that when he first guessed it. But I think it's ahead and, uh, yes. Re- I think I explained it to the group. I don't think it was ever recorded. Uh, I chose the name Andre in mm-hmm. reference to Andre Bassett, the, the the great saint of Quebec, Canada. And the reason I chose him is he did little things with great fortitude and great uh, resonance. He was the the keeper of the keys for the cathedral in Quebec, and he greeted people as they came in to uh, to the cathedral during the day and helped them with their needs. And because of his dedication, he was made a saint. And I and I was thinking, and I I was thinking along the same lines of what Saint um, Mother Teresa said: Not all of us are capable of great things, but we're all capable of small things with great love. And so yeah. oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah he's that, that, yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah he's you have a, to finish every sentence with a, a, a. <laughs> yeah, a. Yeah. That's right. And you're required to bring well, actually, round bacon from back now on. Wouldn't it be uh, wouldn't it be in French? Which I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say French. I, how, how do you do a in a in a? I don't know, but I can talk French. with an amazing French accent oh. if you wish me. So, so, does so, that mean only uh, that I have to finish half of my sentence? With so a, the with hat's got to be a toque with a. Yeah, uh, no, you're Italian. Well, no, but I mean, uh, blood wise, I mean, you know, we've we've had this discussion uh, where. Uh, no, no, you're not Canadian. He's Canadian. You're well, technically a hat. <laughs> Canuck. Let, let's let's hey, just, let, I want to give a Martin point. a chance to finish his <laughs> bourbon here because he hasn't spoken yet. Yes. Oh, so, no, it, yes. Well, and then, I, and then and, uh, and, I think and, and let the imperator have his has his oh, his moment too. Yeah. So uh, I just went the opposite direction. I I just J W Dant, as we know the Great story stuff. behind J W mm-hmm. Dant, very much that. Uh, I mean Bourbon Royalty. The name is Bourbon Royalty. Yeah. So, yeah. so Heaven Hill actually owns the rights to use the J.W. Dant name and put out a bourbon with that name. But now the Dant family is back into distilling at Log Still at Log Still Distillery. The Monks Ma- Road. Ma- oh, Ma- makers of Monks Road, which uh, I very much enjoy. Mm-hmm. And of course, as we know, it's it's Monks Road because Gethsemane Abbey is at one end, and Cajun's at the other. <laughs> right, <laughs> Cajun's, yes, Cajun literally backs up. His backyard is the, it's the, the, the distillery. Yeah. So, um, Which is fa- phenomenal. And yeah. for non-Catholics, the, the monastery is where the monks live, hence Monk's Road. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's it's been in court and everything uh, that, uh, you know, Dan has to be careful of how they reference their family mm-hmm. Distilling legacy with with the Monks Road products. Right, I'm not even sure you can even use their name in any of the. the, the, the uh, I think they can use their name, but they can't really say. I think it's like you can't really say like JW. Yeah, right? we're con- no. we're continuing the legacy of JW Dant because Heaven Hill rightly says. Yeah, I'm there's not no legacy the, to continue. Not sure where the we're legality putting it out. of yeah. the brand falls yeah. on so, that because you know, it's, Wally it, and it has team. been in U.S. District Court for the Western District of Kentucky and, and, and got you decided and mm-hmm. got decided in court. Uh, yeah. But yeah, J.W. Dan is a, is a twelve dollar pour, no big deal. I think it was fifteen. So for it, yeah. yeah, so it's one I've been wanting to feature for a while. Yeah, yeah. So what are you tasting? Um, it's kind of a little bit of a chocolatey taste. And then not super sweet, but sort of a one noter. You know, it is probably a lower age statement. I would guess four uh, to six years max. Oh, it might be four to six months. Uh, <laughs> well, it's got to be at least two years. years. <laughs> it has to be two years. I would bet that that's a two year bourbon. Uh, really, at, that at low? Bucks. I would. I oh would've... yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. At, at twelve bucks, fifteen bucks. I yeah. mean, it just depends that on Detroit where you get it. Detroit distilling we did when we did the uh, the New Year's when, I, when yeah. we did the tasting flight. Uh, that was a two-year bourbon, and to me, that's like why even bother? 
at two years. Well, it's, I mean, now, I tried a, it again. It's a, a price point thing. Yeah, it's just yeah. a price point thing. Well, I get that. Yeah, and, and you know, obviously, at two years, you can turn it faster, so you yeah. can you can do yeah. it. A, a putting it out. It, it's a reliable brand. I mean, it's been around for fifty plus years, yeah. and it's, it's and it is a Heaven Hill product. I yeah. mean, you're not going to go wrong there. Yeah, yeah, they know their business. So this is more of a mixing bourbon than a sipping bourbon. Yeah, I mean, that's what it's it's more yeah. meant for. It, it, it's like at Detroit Distilling, I would say, because I finally had that again on yeah. ice. Definitely a mixing bourbon. It, it, it's, it's it's okay. Yeah, it's very neutral, a little bit flat, kind of you know, just a one noter. Right. Well, I've been wanting to feature it because a my grandfather worked at that distillery in the fifth forties. What oh, relative God. do you have? I know, that didn't I know. Work no, at I, a I, distillery. Yeah, I was just going to drop it in and move on. Uh, so there's a little bit of a family thing, and there's a little bit of a family connection on that. But it's been around for a while. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's it's one of those you know go to guys that. Everybody's tried, the and you, you guys know me. I'm a big, big anti snobbery on bourbon. Oh yeah, I have no respect for this whole secondary market business. And Pappy Van Winkle is something only the wealthy can afford. Uh, I'm sorry, you know, uh, shoot that in the head because I don't believe in it. Well, and, and I would agree with you with that. The opposite, yeah. You know, I mean, I understand secondary market. You know, bottle is hard to find. That's just yeah. basic supply and demand. Uh, because maybe it's a small release. Those I understand, but yeah, some of these ones that that go for, uh, you know, like uh, there was the, the Weller's White, for instance, that I saw at yep. the liquor store that uh, is over by Brother Andre, a thousand dollars. Yeah, see, and that's that, the, that is just a, almost criminal. Well, no, I almost criminal. You're, you're well, looking uh, at a Pappy Twenty Three will run you about seven to eight grand. Uh, again, and again, no almost, bourbon is worth seven almost to eight grand. criminal. That's correct. I mean, I, 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 mean, I can't say much because I bought it. You know, well, if, uh, if you're willing to buy it. I like I'm it. not even going to Why haven't you <laughs> brought it, then, if you've bought it? Well, because Wait. it's at my son's. He sent it we well, should, we overseas. We sent it to the Netherlands. Dummy, you should have. Oh, I know you love your son. We love your son. I, was, I, was, come on. I, was, I don't love I, my son that much. I was, I was, that's, I was, that's, I was, that's a lot of love. Yeah. I was actually saving saving some bourbons for, for specifically when I was taking my last gasp. Well, now, there and is I, that. I, yeah. I totally get that. Totally and get I that. ended up living. Yeah, I can't drink anymore. That's yeah. right. Well, well, well you, I mean, you could, but you choose not I to choose out of not respect. Choose not to out of yeah. respect. That's the, right. Yeah. The but. difference, though, I mean, I don't care if you spend that, but to act like this is the only thing worth doing. Oh yeah, no. You know, no. To, to like no, you said, a like snobbery not. of well, that twenty five dollar bourbon is not. That's not. You could pour that in your driveway. Exactly. You know. Right, because we've had we've talked about many bourbons yeah, that are in that yeah, twenty to thirty dollar range. This oh, yeah, is the only thing. That's where I have an objection. I mean, if you want to spend your money on. Well, twenty five hundred dollar bourbon, go for well, it. See, well, but I objected. To I the object fact that there to that. Are twenty five hundred dollar bourbon. That's right, okay. because maybe I would like to try that. Maybe I'd like to buy a bottle to share but with my friends. It's and not that's MSRP. Not well, yeah. well, and therein lies my entire well, but problem. There are some it MSRPs. Is false. It is yeah. false. that are in the multiple three digits. Now I don't yeah. know if there's an MSRP that's that's four digits. I, see, the price the, of a bourbon is dictated by what someone is willing to pay for it. Well, the yeah. price of anything and is. And yeah. therein yeah. lies my yeah. issue: is but, that you know somehow this whole thing has mo- morphed into a, a rich well, man's well, yeah. rich I man's mean, problem. And, and, and I've, but I've there got, are the, all right. Hold on, we're, we're talking over each R- other. Hang on, AR fifteen. Sorry, was it me? Yeah, it's you. And then we'll let Brother Andre. I've got cigars that my wife bought me years ago that she spent a fair bit of money on. Well, she loves you. You know, understand that. Uh, 30 to $50 a cigar back when they were bought. Now they're five, $600 a stick cigars. Part of that's age. Now, Part of it is age. Now, if you have a, a bourbon from 30 years ago that is yet yes. to be cracked, I can understand how yeah, that will you be have, up in you price. Have scarcity. Yes. Yeah. yes. But when you have a bourbon that is released that has to go on lottery, yep, and yeah, you go that you know sometimes those lotteries you have to pay to even get into, yes, yep, before there you even go. buy uh-huh. it, and you know it, well, it's just that's the part that I have a problem. Something with. is wrong with the system. Yeah, because I'm sorry. Well, not necessarily. The point that I wanted to bring out is yes, I'm sorry. You know, yeah, there, I, there are there are certain times where. Some of these bourbons are specialty and yeah. what we would consider a treat. Mm-hmm. You know, we we each have to eat every day, but that doesn't mean we each get to eat Chateaubriand. You know, for every meal. Yeah. Not know, that I would j- want to, but the, the um, you know the JW Dant that we just talked about being one note. It's a fine bourbon. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But it's it's not you know the two thousand dollar bottle or have that special. Exactly. Well, it's not even the, the seventy dollar bottle of Eagle Rare. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it, it's something that can be enjoyed. 
But when you get that chance to get that a taste of that two thousand dollar bourbon, yes. maybe that's a special treat. And mm-hmm. it, but you know, and it makes I do recognize special. there is a hierarchy of uh, there's quality, quality and quality price. And price. But, that's great. And I'm, but, I'm presuming that okay. in, in this entire argument that price has outstripped quality. Exactly. Okay, it yeah. can't. Because well, hey, I get you. There, but, but there those... is a point where you might not, for most tasters, won't be able to tell the difference. Exactly. exactly. And that's fine. When you talk yeah, about that's it. That's how this is able to happen. If right. there was a one-to-one correlation between price and quality, I would be less objective. Uh, you know, have a less yeah. of an objective okay. to it. But, but there is not. Some of it's, okay. my, uh, are, I suspect, you know, our but, natural diaconal. Uh, it was partially that, but also it's my up for the poor. You know my my uh, 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 my my Scottishness that I've absorbed from yeah. Martin here. Yeah. Okay. I was just say because you um, ain't Scottish, but you know we we know um, one. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, you know, I grew up in a relatively poor family. I didn't realize at the time, as most kids who grow up in a poor family well, do, you don't know any different because you don't know any different. That's right. You know, it, um, you know, it, but I've always been a little bit more thrifty than the Imperator, for instance. I I do tend to I I'm willing to spend money now. You are well now. Clay for Clay's first legal drink, okay. When he turned 21, we went out and I got him 23 year old Pappy. See now, I, I think unless you have had but, a ch- somebody who has already been drinking whiskey, any kind of whiskey, much less a 23 year Pappy, is wasted on a 21 year old. No. I, because he didn't say his first the, drink. He said, he said legal, legal, but I but, but was, I prefaced that. Have, okay. if, they, if they have not already been drinking, it was it, not it, the taste. It sets a bar. It sets a bar. Well, it wasn't. Ju- it, it wasn't was the just moment. the moment. Yeah. It was. But can he? Can it he was, truly appreciate it? He could. Ah. And I set it up for him. I got him an appropriate chocolate dessert to go with it. Okay. And he loved it. And and to be fair. It was only a hundred bucks for the shot. Yeah. Well, yes, for a shot. For a yes. shot, yeah. yeah. Well, but it was pour. only for one pour. But it was his bucks. father showing him it was. what it means to be an adult. So it, I, I get that. It can't, you can't walking get with the him. stuff at a fairly reasonable a hundred dollars for a hundred dollars for a shot is is crap. No, I quite it, enjoyed it. Well, you it, may have enjoyed it. I'm just saying, for it me, it was worth spending a hundred dollars. It's overpriced. It was it's over, for me for well, a twenty-three right. year pappy. It is overpriced. For is most people. is not something that I mean. I would have to win the lottery, and okay. I mean one of the big ones because I just cannot see myself spending that kind of and money. That, you well, even if you hit the lottery, you wouldn't spend that money based well, on your regret. No, no, no. no. Your nature fine. depends on how much of the lottery. If <laughs> I win like the million dollar lottery, probably not. You just no. told us you're if, frugal by nature. If I win the hundred million dollar lottery. My frugality has expanded to a certain point. <laughs> I understand that. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, let's face it. In, in reality, there is no such thing as an unspendable uh, income. I, yeah. I truly believe that. However, I'm too lazy to work that hard okay. to spend that kind of Because you got to work hard that. to spend $100 you million. Dollars. You do. You do. Uh, but now you have a million dollars. I'm thinking, well, you know, what was it? I Brewster's still got to. I got to get. Yeah, Brewster could only spend uh, thirty million. Thirty yeah. million in thirty days. Yes, and it was hard. <laughs> the it toy. Was. Yeah, because he had to throw it away. He couldn't. He, he couldn't could, have he money couldn't when have he was done. Anything Brewster's afterwards. millions. Yeah. Oh, the toy Richard is a Pryor. Different, yeah, yeah, different movie different with Richard Pryor. Pryor. Similar yeah. premise, similar time frame. Yeah. But uh, the only reason I say uh, 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 Pappy's twenty three is wait because even if Pappy's. I've had pappies before, but it's been so long, and I truly I did not have the palate to, then to understand. That's why I say oh, that okay. even though I had been drinking bourbon before that, mm-hmm. you have to have a sophisticated palate. And I only mean sophisticated in the, in the, in the sense of educated, palate. developed, okay. and educated. Yeah. That a 21-year-old, even if they have been drinking on the side illegally. Well, he had been drinking bourbon, high-end bourbons with me for years. Okay. I, I Still. Uh, you know, now granted, if that's how you want to spend your money, you oh, have yeah. at it. I have absolutely no oh, problem. I, understand I, that. I just want to put it aside and note that as we're going down this rabbit hole, money only makes you more of what you are. Yeah, absolutely. If you're, if you're a good person, uh-huh. well it'll said. make you a really good person. Exactly. If you're a bad person, it will make you a really bad person. And if you're an extravagant Amen. person, yes. extravagance will well, lose. One, one, I, man's I extra- am, one man's am. extravagance can be another man's generosity. Yeah. True. And True. I, and, I, and the Imperator is a generous man. Yeah. No question. I've known him a long time. And as is Cajun. I tend to live for That's experiences, right. just like Cajun does. And yes. 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 And, and he made a memory. Part, part made a special of, memory. Part of what I have is the 
one of the best things that ever happened to me was literally when they told me I was terminal. Because then it made it to where I want to enjoy everything that I'm doing in my life. Sure, sure. Because that, that because is a was, moment of clarity that's, a, that many of us a, never get. It was get. a life-changing event for me. Oh. Absolutely. Uh, Live like you were dying, exactly. as, uh, as Tim McGraw would say and, so very well. You know, and that, you know, it's, so it's, hold on. Uh, uh, and Brother Andre, I think it was like, "How long are we going to spend on this?" Yeah, exactly. Is what I think. I am. I am trying. Yeah. I wanted to make sure. Pull us out of I it. wanted to make sure the Imperator had his say. Well, oh, no. this is the kind of thing, though, that that um, it's obviously a rabbit hole. But by the way, Rabbit Hole is one of those sponsors we're trying to get. Yeah, we, we want to get because desperately. We yeah. desperately need them. Yeah, because I mean that that's our entire show is a rabbit hole. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, Rabbit Hole Bourbon is phenomenal. It is. There's no we question. We had it on the show Wonder, back uh, at our when we did the tasting flight at my place, mm-hmm. uh, but that was neat. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now, and we, I, we didn't spend time with it like right. We could have. And I yes. because it was my bottle, I, I recently went back to it. Mm-hmm. And, oh my gosh. Yeah. Phenomenal. It, it, is, it has been. It has it a high, uh, high reputation amongst their. Yes. Okay, and all let's, local. But and all local. That's right. But the the thing I want to say though, all of this stuff, it's what snakes and otters is about. It's that uh-huh. pointless discussion of eternal questions because exactly. we're talking about things. Yeah, they, that are yeah, it, philosophical, yeah. qualitative, not quantitative. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was just trying to get us back on track with Francis your, your personal. Get there. Yeah, your personal well, we philosophy is that we're spending. A hundred bucks on a drink of Pappy. Exactly. Right. That, that's uh, a philosophical question. It was, it is. And it is you are about. It is. What kind of individual are you? Right. Are you mm-hmm. the best you that you can be? Mm-hmm. Which we've talked about. Yeah. Yes. Well, not yet. We haven't. Well, I was well, going to say, but we will. But we will we next will. month. We'll All right. Talk about let's it. let's let's slide back in because I yes. want to spend the rest of our time mm-hmm. on Francis Ford. Coppola. So we're at we are exactly one hour. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So I'd yeah. like to kind of spend the rest of our time, be that yes. what it is, on his crowning achievement. Apocalypse Now. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you a quick question. Oh, yeah, and if if you have an uh, uh, addition, the uh, reason I ask this is because we are, you know, we really need to cut this within the next thirty minutes, Matt. That was yes. my plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're only going to give it. Um, do we want to? Because basically, that means we only talk about two movies. I'm okay with four. That. Well, I mean, in depth. I mean, we yeah. really yeah. Have to talk no. about two. Three Godfathers and Apocalypse Now. That's four yeah. movies. Yeah, and, and I mean, Godfather in general. In I mean, my that's opinion, kind of one that's thing. what our listeners would like to hear. Well. But, I well, mean, does be, that really – is his impact really only two movies? Well, to be fair, most people don't know any Coppola movies other than those. Yes. Well, that's – you know, and – Drop a comment and drop a message in the comments and let us know what other Ford movies you want us to discuss. Well, yeah, because, he, he, you know, he did The Outsiders. He, he did, did Rumble Fish. He did. he did Peggy Sue Got Married. Mm-hmm. And oh, my God, that's right. That's right, yeah. Yes. So I did see that. And yes. his and I do want to say this. His uh, Megapolis is, a, is literally the trailer dropped yesterday, which is his yes. next big movie, which is one – He's been wanting to work on, mm-hmm. so kind of to give a little tease yeah. forward. I mean, about again, right? He is his more than is those, yeah. those is up and down, um, mm-hmm. but nothing as big as these two. Even the successes yeah. again, The Outsiders was successful. Peggy Sue Got Married was successful yeah. film. Well, but successful, there, but I mean, it was it was basically your you know not exactly a, a rom com by a, today's standards. It, but yeah. they were standard eighties. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. Yeah. Uh, so, but that that his reputation as an artist is built on, and you know we're all films. about craft. Yeah. So that's well, why I want to. Yeah, but go but ahead. that's my thing though. If your reputation, and again, this is not denigrating him. I, th- this is more of a I philosophical that's question, right. you know, mm-hmm. that eternal question kind of thing. If your reputation is built on uh, two movies or even a series okay. and another movie, yeah, because uh, I mean, most people think of The Godfather, they think of all three, all of them together. Yeah, that's fair. That's totally fair. fair. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they were done in basically what is your second decade of movie making? Yes, uh, and really the the first decade where you could truly stretch your wings because the yeah. Yeah. movie zeitgeist, the movie making zeitgeist, actually finally got to where you already were. Well, yeah, that's very. That's, that's good. That's very good. Yeah, yeah. you're yes. exactly right. Yeah, uh, and this is the guy that's not all that familiar with with, with no, but all you're, of the but stuff you're right. that you guys are. You know the culture. So. Right? Mm-hmm. How fair is it to say that he's such a great movie maker? Okay. Because it's not a, in some ways, it's a, what have you done for me lately? And yes, he's had some commercial successes. Like Peggy Sue was probably fairly successful. It was, yeah. And there's some other movies that we know are notable. But if the only thing you've known for, it'd be like saying that George Lucas is only known for Star Wars. Star Wars. 
at the very beginning, yeah. and that he's done you know okay. hardly anything we can remember. Does that discount then. that he's not a great movie maker? I mean, I think that's exactly that, what he's asking. Actually, well, I'm let, there with Lucas because American Graffiti in the first two Star Wars movies, and then I don't want to hear any more about it. I, Raiders? I, okay. Oh, well, Raiders, yeah. Raiders, yeah. Well, but you well, Raiders. he didn't direct those. No, no but, he, but he was he yeah. was producer and producer. And, producer. and it now, was his uh, IP, very much right, so. Right. Now, I, I will say this, okay, in, in, in what you're saying. Spielberg, Lucas, and Coppola mm-hmm. all came from that same basic film school. Right, and yes, that, we talked about that. Philosophy that, yeah. and everything else. All of them have a couple of big hits. They were really big. Well, Spielberg probably has more than a couple. He has a few. Yeah. yeah. He, he, but, he's, but he's deliberately chosen but that, he's though. he's deliberately chosen them. That's right, yeah. I don't necessarily consider them, though, those particular great movies, to be their great directorial success. The reason I say that is the writing behind those wasn't theirs. Well, and they, neither was The Godfather. No, it wasn't. It was Puzo's. I agree. It was Puzo's. But when you have a great recipe to work with, yeah, that's a spectacular recipe, yeah, you don't have to be that great a director. Oh, I think you oh, sir. I disagree. Yeah. A director no, can destroy can, a totally story. You can totally destroy, totally destroy it. Yeah. But when it's that good of a writing, you have an advantage with that. You do, because but I think it can be squandered. No, I, very much so. I think be, it can be squandered. But look at the rest of the movies in their careers. They've got a lot of things that went basically into the toilet. Nobody remembers them. Well, people do remember the worst movie that Spielberg ever oh, made. Oh, yes, that they do. 1942. Yeah. 41. 41. Uh, 41. 40. Yeah, it's 40. 41? It's not 41. No, it's 41. 41. 41. 41. John Belushi. John Belushi, right. yeah. Who was hot as a pistol at the time it yeah, was made. He was. They thought that nobody could, you know, anything I Belushi agree. put his name on is going to succeed. Yeah, and Belushi and Spielberg, how could you go wrong? And, and yeah. they did. It was, it was kind of 1941. Like, that's right. Yeah. It was dumb as all get out. So even but, even he. But, but you know what? That's that's similar to a lot of those kind of in fairness to what your point, what you're talking about here, just because the breadth of their genius is not as large as, say, Spielberg, because he's had a lot of really great ones. Spielberg has had He's been a them. commercial right. success in, in beyond the many other areas, yes. Yes. many movies, whereas in this case, the depth of what they did was so groundbreaking, mm-hmm. yeah. so changing, so unique, mm-hmm. so very much them. That's yes. kind of where I am. That's where we're at. And I, I think mean, I'm, 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 I'm willing to start here. Yeah, I'm willing to let... They were, they're they're, they're, they're their their splash was so yeah. big yes. because you can't those, ignore them. Those two, even films though there was only two, are so groundbreaking that Absolutely. I'm willing to let Coppola's reputation as a great artist rest on those films. That's alone. exactly it. He, yeah. They were so good yeah, I don't that but, I think that that's so. It's like a To Kill a Mockingbird situation. Yeah, yeah it's it was really so good film. and so. I mean, everything else. Yeah, so I the, mean, there's a phrase for it. I'm trying not to use, but go uh, ahead. Shot a oh oh shot your yeah yeah, there, yeah. Were one, there were one shot wonders or two shot wonders well it doesn't but it, but it, it, but it doesn't when mean they, when they, they doesn't landed have talent, they I they were that landed. wonder the, you right, know the wonder yeah, was they, so big we're talking about a fifty years later after yes. they were made I, and I get that I, I people agree. still talk about both but, of these movies but people still talk about Metropolis from nineteen twenty nine. Or Nosferatu. Or Nosferatu. Nosferatu yes. Yeah, there's reasons, of, there there's reasons for that. There's reasons for that. But they, well, but those are where things changed. In the seventies, you had right. We Lucas, talk, yes. Spielberg. Yeah. That's when their time came. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. And they peaked there. Well, and you can only be. Oh, I don't know. I think Spielberg, new artist. I think Spielberg's the, the pr- Spielberg's carried on more commercial. To the 80s. Well, not even just more commercial. I think Spielberg as a sustained. Creative genius, yeah, he's far good. surpasses Francis Ford Coppola and I, well, I would agree. George and we Lucas. will eventually do I a Spielberg agree. episode yeah. because that's, that's, and we can go deeper but with. You that. can only be the hot young artist who transforms the business for yeah. so long. Exactly, and you become and everybody else old hot up. artist. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but that's why that's why I say Spielberg is the the greater of the three because yeah. oh, I don't think his genius. He's, he's kept morphing and doing new things, right? So and not just Coppola, commercial successes. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, like, it's like comparing Michelangelo to Rodin or something. You know, well, Michelangelo no, well, had the longer period of time and the more success. Uh, well, he did, but that's also partially because, uh, you know, Medici's. obviously he lived longer. Yeah. But, you know, by the time you get to Rodin's period, 
uh, a lot of those guys are just dying young because of well, yeah. You know, well, you, you know, the equivalent of what I'm hearing you say is, you know, Joseph Salk only had one creation that was the polio vaccine. Exactly. Does that mean he wasn't a great scientist? But that's not exactly what I'm saying. I mean, yeah. it's similar in the sense that, um, uh, you know, it's put it's putting it in the right scale. Well, there's scale, you know, and again, I, I don't mean to disrail, you know, to derail yeah. the, the conversation oh, yeah. about apocalypse now because these are things that should be studied and talked about because oh, yes. of the impact i now grant you that i'm quite i'm only throwing out the question again this is partially to to, to stir the pot a little bit uh-huh. um, Devil's advocate? uh somewhat somewhat you know we um, we'll have an argument i mean that was one of our best when we argued about voltaire let's let's okay. have the argument well, and again I, again it's not that i'm saying that he's not i'm just questioning yeah. um is mm-hmm. he as great as he's talked about because of yeah, no, yeah. I, I I do think he is entitled to his reputation. Well, yeah, even, even though, yes, maybe not everything has been super groundbreaking, but one, he stayed true to himself, mm-hmm. and that's always important. Yes, you know, he he, he, especially he, for a creative, he took the material that he wanted to do, yeah, made something out of it, and when there wasn't material that he was doing, he He's paid those consequences. It. In that uh, he's had some financial ups and downs too. Oh yeah, very much so. And some of that, you know, he's he's come around out of it. Uh, some of its reputation, some yeah. of his fact that he diversified. I mean, he's become he's decided basically. Yeah, and he I want to be a wine, I want to be. I yes. want to run a winery. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I want to do. He became you know into business and and devoted energies and other and other and things. And he's allowed yes. and allowed his daughter to, Sophia to yes. take over and do it, well, not yeah. really take over, but. To, yeah, because you can't. I to, mean, to blossom in her own she, area, yeah, her own. not be in his shadow. Well, it, yeah, it's nice. she's done a really good job. To yeah, be able to be a, a to own a winery and to, to make wine, you know, he's not able to do that if he's not had the commercial success with. Well, you're right, exactly. and I'm, to be honest, the Coppola wine, I'm gonna I'm gonna give a big shout out. That is our go to. All the different varieties, you can qu- count on an excellent product with what he puts out. Uh, it's it's one okay. that Mrs. Francis will jump on the all she does see, see that word Coppola she knows what she's getting yeah. and it's and it's excellent okay. of all the different varieties. But I want to I want to segue us back into thank you Robert for all that laying on that. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about in these last few minutes that we have left. I want to talk about what I consider his greatest achievement. And I mm-hmm. know that there were those who would take me to test. They think yeah. it's Godfather one. Yeah. But I know Martin's agreeing with me. Apocalypse now deserves a little bit of love and a little bit of time mm-hmm. that I want to spend with it. Because like Martin, the damn thing is in my head. I can quote you chapter and verse from this mm-hmm. and what have for many you years. Quote chapter and verse. Lots of stuff, but this is one that I definitely <laughs> yeah. know. Well uh, it, and it, it is brilliant. It right. is absolutely brilliant. So, yeah, I want to go deep with the thing. Working with here. another genius, basically. You know, when he works with Puzo, mm-hmm. now he's working with Milius. That's right. Yes. Exactly, and now, I, I will grant you that you know uh, when you're a director, uh, you can you can make a a bad script better. Yes, uh, and when, you can also make a good script bad. Yes, but if you have a really good director, and I and I freely admit he is a, yeah. an excellent director, obviously, uh, to, but to be able to work with that in a partnership, mm-hmm. yeah, with and a, with a is great of writer the, of the same, that's phenomenal philosophy. Yeah. That he yeah. is. He's he's new Hollywood too. He gets that. This is, and of course, he's got great source material. I do want to spend a second on that. Yes. Joseph Campbell's Heart of Darkness. Conrad. Joseph, excuse me. You're right. Jo- jo- Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness, a mm-hmm. short story that is is the basis for this. Completely, a totally different time, totally different system. Mm-hmm. Yep. But it it is the eternal question that is at the heart of apocalypse now which is why i love it and it's why we should be thinking of it as one like the the Mm -hmm. best movies ever made and and that's not just me that thinks that uh because of that eternal question at the very red hot center of that whole movie it is about how evil can we be how yeah that that, what what pushes us to you know it kurtz is a classic you know Everything I'm doing is for everybody's own good. That's right. Mm-hmm. Kind of, you know, Victor Von Doom. Oh, yeah. You that's, know. A, that's a very good. Um, uh, so th- for those not familiar, again, Joseph Conrad's story, Heart of Darkness, is set during uh, the time of African expan- uh, colonialism. Right. African colonialism. Mm-hmm. Uh, man named Marlo is sitting around with buddies playing cards on a boat on the Thames and tells a frame story technique right. of his time as a riverboat captain mm-hmm. in Africa going up to Congo to pick up an ivory trader that no one's heard from. 
uh, named Kurtz. Yeah. Who is believed to have gone native, they would call it. Yeah. And so Milius and Coppola adapt that story to Vietnam. Uh, and therein a, lies the brilliance. A Green Beret so colonel named Kurtz. Marlon Brando. The, who mm-hmm. has gone off the reservation, as they would say. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. He's out, out there operating with no decent restraint. Oh, there you go. I uh, uh, you know, beyond and, the pale of any acceptable, acceptable human, human conduct. Behavior. Yeah, yeah, conduct, yeah. And they and the powers that be send this assassin, essentially. Yes. Uh, Martin Sheen's character of Willard. Willard uh, is Marlowe. Is, 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 yeah. is the Marlowe. And whereas Marlowe goes to find the guy, Willard goes to assassinate. Willard, yes, Willard's tasked with terminate with extreme prejudice. I, God, I hoped you were going to say that because if yeah. you didn't, that's one of those lines out of there. That character, his name is Jerry. He's never, but he's essentially like a CIA spook. Yes, and he speaks nothing in the whole movie except you've spent this whole time talking about Colonel Kurtz and what they have to do, and he mm-hmm. speaks only one line, and that's that word: yeah. terminate with extreme, extreme prejudice. prejudice. Yeah. And it is essentially Willard's task to go into. Right. The, the heart darkest, of darkness. The heart yeah. of darkness and kill it. And the river, you know. And the it, only way the to kill it is, metaphor, to be, is to become it. Yeah, is to reach this dark place That's right. of the human psyche. That's right. And now, not only become it, kill it, and become it at the same time. Yeah. Now is, the only way to kill it is to become it. Is that also in Conrad's story, or is that more in... No, Kurtz essentially just dies. Okay, so this is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and so this, uh, I, I will now uh, refute my own point. Okay. Oh, okay. So, again, because you know, I'm not as familiar with this material as you guys. I understand. Um, what I'm hearing for both Apocalypse Now and The Godfather, contrary to what far too many directors do, which is to take... Now, he sounds like he's sort of almost done that a little bit with the Apocalypse Now source material, but, but not quite in the way I'm going to explain. But far too many directors will take something that is really good and say, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. I could do that better. But they're hacks. And they oh, yeah, they dumb it down. Either they dumb it down or they throw them some explosions. They miss the or point. Yeah. They, they miss the, the point there, there's, or whatever. There's your answer right there. Yes. But what Coppola seems to have done is taken these stories that were excellent on their own. Yes. Mm-hmm. And elevated them. Oh, exactly. That's and, why he's and, a genius. And that's the that's genius. genius. He now, translated it into something that is much more consumable to the American well, experience. Well, not just consumable, but there's, deeper. There's some of that, yeah. Which is, uh, which is where the real de- genius is, because most, for mass markets, making yeah. something deep kills it. Whereas he proved otherwise. Whereas in, in where he has taken cases. the Bugs Bunny route, yeah. as I like to call it. Where okay. there's meaning on multiple levels, definitely, oh, and there's oh, entertainment on multiple levels. Absolutely right. He's shown that, you know, that eternal question. He's dealing with an eternal question yeah. about the duality of the human person, and are we evil first, and good is a possibility, or or the reverse? And he goes deep with that, and, and it's in that journey motif that he uses here. Yeah. That's the, how the that river is, is the metaphor. The river is the metaphor and for the human human journey. Are we and good first or evil first? Exactly. That is doing. the eternal question. And exactly. It. And that's why that movie is such an absolute amazing. Well, he he told a story on many fronts. You could watch it and watch an army officer going up to conduct his mm-hmm. mission mm-hmm. and his success or failure thereof. Or you can ask about the question of the good versus the evil being intrinsic. Well, mm-hmm. And he tells yeah. a story on multiple levels. And that yeah. is what I, where I wanted to right. point out. That, and who that, is he saving, kind of Kurtz or himself? Right. right. Well, And far too many directors not Kurtz. can't do that. They can't, not just can't tell stories on multiple levels. Because honestly, I think commercially nowadays, most of them can't. Uh, yeah. It's all about the visual uh, extravaganza. And they, but... To be able to do that, whether he applies those same kinds of techniques to other stories, yes, supports, Martin, your your position that, you know, no matter what else he's done, he gets a pass because of these two. Yeah, and that's well, exactly it. Yeah, Martin, The, the I mean, thing, thing is, territory? when they were shooting Apocalypse Now, you had so much rampant drug use on the set. You did. That's correct. That Martin Sheen ended up having a heart attack. Yes, he did. At 36. Yeah. Well, you the rampant had, drug use would have been uh, realistic. Well, exactly. It would have been realistic. And they were shooting, to be fair, they were shooting in the middle of a civil war. 
Yes. When they yes. were taking off for the flight of the Valkyrie things, yeah. those guys were going to kill people. That's exactly yes. right. They're, they're filming okay. a lot of that stuff. They are. They were and filming. Coppola never knew when these helicopters that he's kind of leased from exactly. the local when they government, go. well, they're going to leave. Exactly. You know? And they did, and, you know, at the drop of a hat. And everything was done so recklessly. You had people killed on set. That's true. They actually slaughtered a live buffalo. <laughs> yeah, that was real? In, in that was real. End, it was real. That's correct. Because it's in the, the Philippines. They get away exactly. with it. Exactly. These, these were that, Buffalo, all, buffalo, or like water buffalo? Water or buffalo. Water buffalo. Water buffalo. Okay. Yeah. These were this all is, things that you could not have happened today. Very true. Okay. Uh, there, it was, to be fair, the shooting was an absolute disaster. Coppola himself would say that. I mean, exactly. some of it he did from his bathtub. Uh, some yes. of it was it took uh, it took forever to do because of the weather and the issues weather, like you that. Had a t- you had a he said he, he would say afterwards that he himself was paralleling that journey. He he, he was. literally went insane. He did. He went insane while he was he's suicidal. trying to do that. Yeah, you know that's that's an interesting point about the the difficulties of filming. Uh, nowadays, that movie it uh, wouldn't have been shot. You well, you couldn't. You could do the movie, but ninety percent of it you would, would do in the studio green yeah, you screen. Would. Yeah, sorry, You'd CGI. have to do green screen or CGI. Right. Yes, all of it because they just wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, I mean, every, you, every, almost every foot of the film was shot in the Philippines. Yes, again during a time when they were suppressing a, a rebellion. Right, yes. Marcos was doing his uh-huh. thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and, blowing and, up and, communists. And, and another and. One of the amazing things about this movie, too, is so many movies, by the time you've spent this all this time getting, especially in a journey mm-hmm. motif, by the time you get to where you're going, it's almost anticlimactic. It was not, in this case mm-hmm. here, you really do bring that rising action, as mm-hmm. we've talked about here. Mm-hmm. When he meets Kurtz, and Marlon Brando was his own animal, yeah, he had he was. his own problems, he was the diva of all divas. But he also was damn talented. There's no Brand- doubt. Brando's Brando. He pulls it off. Yes. Uh, and some of it was bec- and he ironic. He wanted that part. Yeah, he did. He was willing to put up with the requirements oh, and yeah. do the part. And it was actually somewhat short comparatively. But, yeah. But he, he didn't have to spend two years in the Philippines. To, like, be, but to be fair, he, Brando was as crazy as the character. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but because of his demands and the way yes. Coppola had to shoot him. Mm-hmm. God, he sells it. He, he does. sells it so perfect. This is a dangerous, totally effed up individual mm-hmm. that absolutely, as the, as the as the story goes, should be removed. Oh yeah. And then that's what and that, should he? But then again, that's exactly mm-hmm. that's exactly Willard's. He was, you know, he dilemma. was put on the list not only to be have his command taken away, but to be terminated with terminated extreme. with extreme prejudice exactly. for telling the truth. Yeah, well, that's a for, and for there being an agent genius. of the truth. The yeah. Genius, because you can't win a war the way you clowns are fighting it. And that's yeah. he's exactly and right. And where, that's why I you know, think where Willard I'm glad you circled up. back to that because that is one of the reasons why this movie mm-hmm. was so. The reason it's his is right. the oh, crowning yeah. achievement of many in movies of all made. Yeah, I mean it's one of the greatest pieces that Milius wrote. The the mm-hmm. speeches are awesome. All the dialogues terrific. Um, but that meta they're classic. They're they're classic Milius speeches. Yes. And then you build onto that then this vision of uh, uh, what is this you know this nature of humanity and mm-hmm. and, and how how are you, how do you end up on the list to be terminated for telling the truth. And that's ex- and therein lies the tension that makes this so great because you're exactly right. War is so effed up, yes, and it effs up all of us in so many ways. Yeah, that right becomes wrong, up becomes up down. is down, left is right. Yes. Cats right. and dogs and living together. Exactly Mass right. hysteria. Exactly. That's right, and that's exactly what right. Willard himself becomes the avatar of. Yeah, of trying to be that insanity. You know, and, and, well. well uh, Brando, Kurt says it. What do you What do you say when the assassin accuses the assassins of being an assassin? Yeah, mm-hmm. you know yeah. Uh, that's and that's exactly who watches the watchers. Who watches yeah. the watchers. It's exactly the right. same yeah. thing. But the, and the, that's why this movie is so great. And, and yeah. he tells him, you know, you're not who you think you are. You know, Willard, are you an assassin? He says, Well, I'm a soldier. He says, you're, you're an errand, errand boy sent by, by the grocery, grocery clerks, clerks to collect like a bill. bill. That's exactly you're it. nothing. Yes, That's you're right. not who you think you are, but and you're a zero. Imperator. The thing is, we grew up in that time. We grew up post Vietnam. Post Vietnam, yes. Uh, when we were babies, I'm sure we were watching the TV just like our parents were. The evening news. It was all I, whatever. Francis and I talked about this last night. Uh-huh. I have no memories, no memories of 
Vietnam. Okay. During Vietnam. Okay. I, yeah. I don't It's like my either. earliest uh, memories of societal memories mm-hmm. as opposed to childhood memories are of the Watergate. Watergate. On, okay. that, that's, that's, what, that's the earliest but, things I remember about on TV that's news is but, Watergate and Apollo. Okay. Yes. But things have changed so much generationally and with time. Andre had never seen that. And I bet you're, you're, well, I've never your seen knowledge the whole thing. of... Of uh, I was born after Vietnam, after Vietnam was a thing. And what, hey, you're, you're younger than us. Yeah, but how old are you, again, Andre? I was born in seventy. But seventy. Two years years old as my yeah. wife. But it's look at four. your response bad. to the fact that they actually killed the water buffalo. It was shock, horror, almost. You couldn't believe it because you're you've grown up in this CGI world. Mm-hmm. No, um, he's only four years younger than us. There's a huge difference between those born because post he could, 70. Because he could not remember. Vietnam, I think that's more of, of as we well, could. no, because so no? we were, while you were in there, we were just well, saying, yeah, we have we have no memories of no Vietnam memory, while it was Vietnam. It was only post Vietnam history of Vietnam, the, right? Yeah, but, Whereas I just think that's just your nature. Brother Andre, I think that's just you know. I, I think it has to do with the fact you know, that he's po- he's post seventy. No, 70. The, no well, I don't think so. It, yeah, if it were post ninety, maybe he's still yeah. a Gen X. I mean, he's, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's prime he, Gen X. He understands where steak comes from, well, right? Yeah, and, and you know what? I I realized that it makes the, you feel the, better. They ate the buffalo after. Well, yeah, good, yeah. Yeah, well, so yeah, that makes everything better. They did eat it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I want to. So, they stuff. did the same yeah. thing with the Filipinos that died during the. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so one of the things, uh, just I just want to uh, throw one more thing out. This is more of a future thought. Please go ahead. Um, it, it occurred to me while while Martin was talking about the the, the Melia speeches because we've talked mm-hmm. about the Melia speeches. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Many he wrote, times he wrote the one in Jaws. I he mean, did. he is right. like the guy. He, yeah, yeah. If you, if you want writer. great speeches, he's the guy you go to. Uh, but one of the things that, just as a philosophical thing in one of our creative hoopa jubes or something that we mm-hmm. really uh, is good to explore, I think, whether we do it on the blog or where, even it's just when we're just not recording, although we probably should. Yeah, uh, we've got a hoopa um, coming up in a couple weeks. Is this relationship between the creator and the source material? Mm-hmm. Uh, like that. Yeah. You know, especially when, when you come to filmmaking. Yeah. Uh, you've got the director who translates the word Mm -hmm. to the visual action yeah but it's not entirely different from say a michelangelo who i Mm -hmm. consider to be the greatest artist to have ever lived i would agree with you wonderful and you know and and i think is his first pieta which is in the vatican and saint peter's just to the right as you go in uh which was one of the most moving moments i've ever had seeing that uh, in person mrs robert was brought to tears Mm-hmm. Seeing that she had no idea. I mean, she's seen the pictures, obviously. There's a reason completely it is what it is. To see it it's a completely person. different experience. But to be, and obviously, he's not working in, in something original. He's taking source material. Yeah. Yes. And bringing it to life. So mm-hmm. it, there is a similar dynamic oh, going yeah. on. There, you're, you're absolutely. Yeah. And I think that is something that is worth exploring, both as authors, yes. mm-hmm. as just as, as as human beings. Yes. Is how that that fundamental truth is expressed and lived out is and again that's the eternal questions that we are mm-hmm. having the pointless that's discussions why about. apocalypse now was so damn good but, because it did mm-hmm. that yeah that that is what makes for guys like us not everybody yeah. is into this sort of stuff yeah. obviously but for guys like us that's what makes the movie mm-hmm. worthwhile but not no. necessarily the quality of well that's an excellent shot that he did right here because he got mm-hmm. it at this particular angle it's the meaning Oh yeah, and the yeah. the the thought and the discussion that comes out of it. But every, everything, like Schindler's List, yeah, exactly. But everything came together at a particular time and a yes. particular place. He was able to get the actors that were perfect for their parts. Mm-hmm. He got a wonderful cinematographer. The cinematography yep. on the the film is, it is fantastic. amazing. It is. That's right. It's uh, a perfect storm of. It of is. Things. It is a perfect storm. Yeah. And they had a perfect storm during it. Yes. Destroyed <laughs> half the damn set. You're exactly right on yes. that one. Yeah. But uh, it was yeah. all of this coming together at one time. Yeah. I could not location. imagine a Harvey Keitel version of that movie because no. he was originally supposed to. He even filmed some stuff mm-hmm. as Willard. Yeah, and he was replaced. Fired. And, mm-hmm. and uh, nothing against Harvey Keitel because he's a fine actor. He's incredible. Oh, yeah. But 
Martin Sheen really was the right guy it for was. that. Robert Duvall was the right they guy. Were. Marlon yeah. Brando was the right guy. Yeah. Um, well, Martin was, Sheen is a, is a phenomenal guy. Yeah, he's. Uh, yeah, well, I'm I mean, not a big fan of his politics. Uh, in sex, except in certain, mm-hmm. certain areas, he's an extreme yeah, he was, pro-life he was activist. A, yes, but uh, I mean, but you know, Pacino he's was a phenomenal to be actor. In it. Well, that, he, uh, he, yeah. he was. He didn't do it. Yeah, yeah. a couple of people turned him down flat, and said, "I'm not living in the Philippines for two years." Yeah, exactly. exactly. Because Coppola well, had already formed this little cadre of folks that had worked with him. And to be honest, honest, contact. Just from what I know of the movie, the bits I've seen, mm-hmm. and what I know of Pacino. It's a better movie not having Pacino. Exactly, it I is. Agree. He, I agree. he was ama- amazing as Michael Corleone. No, yes. we got the right guys in we, this they, movie. He, yeah. he did. He got, he got the right guys I want to give Brother Andre the last kind of word on it's all freshest this. for him. Yes. It's freshest for him. And I want to say, because you've heard our take, uh, especially Martin's and my, well, all of us, on, on what we thought about this groundbreaking mm-hmm. moment and, and how much so much of that is owed to Coppola, what are your thoughts as someone who watched it for the very first time just last night as we mm-hmm. record this? Even the newbie is more prepared than than Robert. <laughs> yes. So uh, after watching Apocalypse Now, the one sub t- uh, sub story that I took out of there was based on leadership. And, mm-hmm. it, you know, you had the crazy colonel surfing in the middle of a battle. Yeah. Kilgore. And, yeah. Wh- his, whose name was very deliberate, by the way. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. What was his name? Kilgore. 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 Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, the one thing I took uh, from that is even ineffective leadership will lead to great things. Whereas, you know, when they reach the mm-hmm. army outpost at the bridge, there's no leadership and all chaos is breaking. Oh, absolutely. Out. That's oh, my yeah. favorite scene in the whole movie is the, the Dolong, Dolong Bridge. bridge. Yeah. That's right. The last Go army get the roach. outpost on the Nung River. Go get the roach. Exactly. <laughs> See, I, I sent him a text like that when he was talking about it, but you hadn't seen it yet. But that's, you know, sometimes he is the only one, and he is, and he says the most brilliant line, and I'll kind of wrap up with, with that, is chaos is utterly reigning. Mm-hmm. And you're seeing Willard trying to find the CO, and he finds out they're in a bunker, like up the up the way. They they never are. They are never out there. They're never mm-hmm. seen. And and he says, "Soldier, after after this one guy has come in and used his rocket launcher to annihilate the the VC out on the wire, as he say. Yeah. And he's and he does this, and because the only he's the only one." That brings order into this chaos, mm-hmm. and it is the order of violence that he when he does that. And Willard says to him, "Soldier, do you know who's in command here? Because he's been trying to find out who's in command." And he no, looks at me and says, "No yeah. one's in command." No, no, he says, yeah. "Yeah," and he taps his rocket launcher that he's just annihilated mm-hmm. these people with. And he's kind of like that that wise character that knows because he's the one that they all depend on. Mm-hmm. Uh, because when nothing else yeah. will work, go get the roach, go get the roach, go get the roach. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, is he. He's so experienced with a grenade launcher that he knew exactly the angle mm-hmm. to use. That's right. He aimed it by sound. Yeah, by if, sound. If you he, listen to the the soundtrack, if you can pay attention, and it's hard, you can hear the uh, the individual, the, the enemy screaming, you know, "Fugi, Fugi," and then he launches, and boom, it's all gone. Yes. Everything's. Quiet. You should watch it with subtext. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly, because it, it yeah. really is, and that to me kind of encapsulates that mm-hmm. one moment. The Duality, the evil of mankind is at our worst. That's where we're going to go, mm-hmm. and the only hope we have is violence. When we are that bad, and that's the genius. When we don't have leadership, when well, we don't have leadership. You're correct. When, when we let the animal take over, that's exactly yeah. right. And the roach is the example of the animal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he is also very efficient. Which you know, again, very goes effective. back to now, again, not knowing that particular the particulars of that. You know, it goes back to when you let the narcissism overtake everything in general. Mm-hmm. That's when you devolve to the animal. I don't know if that's the case there, or if that's just maybe that is narcissism because you know I like firing this thing so much. I'm going to take care of everything I possibly can. <laughs> you know, there, I mean, there's a little mm-hmm. little bit of psychopath in that. Oh, yeah, that's you know, right. Yeah, yeah. The, the that the violence and well, they, and they somewhere in, him, in that movie, one of the characters says, "One day this war will end." That's Kilgore. And, yeah, yeah. And but you know, he says it with. A depressing Regret. end to that yeah. statement like, is like I won't be able. I don't to want this it. to end. Yes, yeah. so well, I want to continue my violence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he uh, won't be. He it, won't it, be it, king shit anymore when the war, when the war ends. Well, it's, it's right, like right. Uh, in the, uh, the the chart. I don't know if Lee ever said this. He may have. I think he did. But uh, the line in the Civil War in, in I can't remember if it was in Gettysburg or in uh, in in the first book of the trilogy. Um, 
what was the first one? Uh, Gods and Generals. Gods and Generals, thank mm-hmm. you. Yeah, the Michael Schiff, Where uh, Lee Jeff says, yeah. it is good that it, war is so terrible so that we do not love it more. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that, Something that, along those yes, lines. And he says that that, is, that has been spoken of in Lee's voice. It's also spoken of in Wellington's voice. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it's it's a reoccurring theme, right? That has because, come back. Yeah. Well, you know, there's that psychosexual aspect to violence that's that right. is very well documented, penetrative. In, in yeah, the, that's the what psychological it's literature about. nowadays. Uh, you know, it's it's that psychosexual uh, uh, we must, thrust, for lack of a better word. Yeah, yeah you're, you're behind yeah. Psych, uh, behind serial killers. There's right. often yeah. a a sexual. Well, uh, component that to urge that. to dominate in a sexual yeah. context, uh, and there's several things going on there too. It's you know, it's the chance to stand out amongst others, to be you know, it's like unique. The, the, the individual at the end of Goodfellas, you know, you look at the life of a gangster, and you're like, what in the hell? Why would you do that? And he's like, because now I'm a schnook. At the end, I'm nobody. I'm a sh- I'm, I'm That's nothing. That's Joe Pesci, well, right? No, no, Henry Hill. Henry Hill. Oh, yeah, yeah, Henry yeah. Hill at the end, after he's in witness protection, yeah. I have to live the rest of my life as a schnook. I, yeah. I can't, well, I'm not I'm not the big appendage in the locker room anymore. I can't just take, <laughs> I can't just take what I want. They When they lived their life, I mean, like you said, we would blow thousands in a weekend on the bookies and then go to the loan sharks and pay them and then never pay the loan sharks back. What are you going to do, loan shark? I'll choke you with a phone cord until your wig comes off. Yeah. And you're, yeah not, you're not you're going to you're not going to make Jimmy Conway pay money. And it's well, a, 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 an interesting discussion for another day. Sa- yeah. Sadly, when it comes to something like war. Okay, yeah, let, let's give the individuals when when you're talking about individualism and what have you or Let's start it with humanity. Okay. If you are humane, you're saving others. Yes. Yes, that is being fully human. Yes. Exactly. When you turn into the animal, when you let that loose, that is self-survival. That's Kurtz in this movie. Exactly. And that's the sad reality of it. It is. And you end up with either Schindler's, who luckily survived the war. Yeah. But Schindler's main thing, his, the humanity was, he was willing to sacrifice himself. I mean, it was a little self-serving for Sin- Schindler. Well, yeah. I mean, that was a little bit of a, yeah, I, mean, I think it's acknowledged that Spielberg kind of glossed he over did. some, which is surprising, you know, Spielberg is Jewish. Yeah, yeah he, he, but, had, he had, you know. But Schindler was not quite as altruistic in no. reality, but that does not diminish the, the danger and the sacrifice exactly. and, that he put himself in. Amazing. Uh, yeah. for those uh-huh. Jews that he was able to save. All right. I want to thank you, uh, Imperator and Robert, for giving us the last word on those uh, on those items. We could go longer. In other words, we... shut up, Martin. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's well. <laughs> I, I, trust me, I want to go further with this, but I think we've gone really I'm deep. Sure. Yeah, we're, we're at 136. We've, we've, we've we really need let's, to... let's kind of wrap this up. Uh, What's let, next, uh, Francis? Uh, well, we are going to go into Code of Honor next mm-hmm. time. And as always, and you never know where we're going to go with regards to this, of course, but we're probably going to continue a lot of the same themes that we've talked about with this episode here. Uh, we will find a quotation in, in uh, who knows, uh, actually it's up to me, so who knows what where we're going to go with this. not going to tease the audience? I'm not going to tease. No. The, uh, no, I'll tease. I'll tease. Uh, since you prompted me, Oscar uh, Wilde. Oscar Wilde. Okay. Oscar, Oscar Wilde, Wilde is okay. really, I mean, and if you want to talk about prolific and and snarky <laughs> and and, uh, and very individualistic. Individualistic and pithy. Yeah, we got all that next yes. episode. So tune in next time, folks. You're going to love it. We hope you enjoyed another pointless discussion of eternal questions. Remember, new episodes drop every second and fourth Friday at 6 a.m. Eastern, just in time for your morning commute. And every fifth Friday, we drop a special Hoopajube episode. Spread the word we are on all the major platforms and leave us a review. That helps others find us. We're also on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, as well as our website, snakesandotters.com. Join us next time. Same snake time, same otter channel.